All righty. Good afternoon. January the 2nd. And I'm out here walking the dogs for a little bit. You know, the interesting thing is that this is the Electric Pacific Railroad. Yeah, this road here where I usually walk sometimes. Um, I just read the sign there. It's a 12, 1200 volt system, railroad system that was established in 1906. And this particular section of this stretch of the railroad was finished in uh, 1914. It went all the way to LA, all the way to Santa Monica, all the way to San Bernardino. So again, making it very, very clear that electrons have been powering goods in America for a long time. So electric cars are not new by, by any means. And so I just thought that was interesting. Oh. All right, guys, uh, today I wanted to talk to you about some of the questions that are popping up after that video that I uploaded. I'm running out of time. I got to go get some dinner, but very quickly, I can show you visually. One of the questions that keeps coming up is how did I wire or how do you determine how to wire all those cells? 600 cells that we put in this uh, battery on the wall. I very quickly and very crudely did a little diagram in which I show you how to wire them. I guess a lot of people didn't understand that. I'm gonna try to show you a different way visually using actual batteries. It really depends on what the voltage you're gonna use. Your inverter is what's gonna determine that. I haven't picked up an inverter. That's why I really didn't spend time showing you the actual physical wiring of all the 600 cells. They are wired in a way that they don't work for anything right now. They work for powering the Samba because those are the cells that I use to power the Samba. But if I had a 12 volt inverter that I wanted to use with the power well, this is how you would wire it. Three cells. This would be positive, this would be negative. If you connect those here, fully charged, you would get 12.6 volts. The nominal volt would be 11 0.1 and the fully discharged at the very end when they're dead then you would get 9 volts. so this is a hundred percent this is at a zero percent state of charge of course this is not a very big battery it's not going to power a lot so you need to make this battery bigger how do you do that or grab more cells right? and you connect the the positive to positive, negative to negative, positive to po negative to negative, positive. You just connect them and then you connect those like this. And so that would be another 22. So now this would be 44.4 watt hours. And you add another set of batteries, another set of batteries. And so every time you add another three cells in there, you're growing this battery by 22.2 watt hours. And you just keep going, keep going, keep going. In this case, you would go 200 cells here and then 200 cells here. That's 400 and then another 200 and that would be 600 cells. And that would equal about 4.4 kilowatts that I have in that box in there. And this would be wired as a 12 volt system. So now to do a 24, Four point two volt times six, fully charged. Fully charged. These cells will give you twenty five point two volts. This is a hundred percent state of charge. Nominal would be three point seven times six is twenty two point two volts, and fully depleted three times six equals eighteen. So at 18 volts, um, it's 0% state of charge. So as far as this, how much energy is stored in that? Well, we said it's 22. Oh yeah, two amp hours times 3.7 uh, volts. That's 7.4. Each cell has 7.4 watt hours. So 7.4 times six cells, that's 44, 44. So if you add another row here, And that's another 44. You multiply that by two, then that right there, it's 88.8 watt hours. 
and then you keep going all the way till you get all your 600 cells uh, arranged here. 100 cells per each one of these rows and that'll be 600 cells that will be 400 uh it'll be 4,444 uh watt hours 4.4 kilowatt hours that is how you would wire these cells it's very easy using these this uh system here um you know in this case you would you would get uh 10 rows one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all facing the right direction then put all these little things that I did the the the, uh, the copper strips and then put the um, fuses on there and then that would be one cell now here's a question another question that keeps popping up okay so here is a battery cell that I did it's just like this one uh, 150 cells all parallel positive to positive, negative to negative. This, you measure the voltage here, this is uh, whatever. It's full, if this is fully charged, it's gonna be 4.4. In the comments, I keep seeing people that say, where are your, your balance leads? You need to have a, a way to balance every single cell in this module here. That is false. You, you, can't, you don't have to do that because every single cell here is physically and electrically connected to each other. So this cell here cannot be different voltage than this cell here because there is an electrical connection between the two. So this cell wants to be higher, it's gonna have to bring the entire group that is connected electrically to that cell. Um, and so therefore this essentially what it is, it's a one multi-cell battery just like your 12 volt battery that is in your car. That battery, it's made up of several cells inside. Uh, lead acid battery does not have to be um, balanced because all you do is you just charge them all the way to the top. You know, the smallest cell will reach the top first and then that will just boil and then the other ones will reach or whatever. And then they're all gonna be balanced at the top. Lithium does not work that way, but you do not have to balance each individual cell. Tesla does not have to balance 7,000 uh, cells in, in, in the Model S. This will have to be balanced up against another module. So this module, like if I were to put, connect them all together and then make this another module, this group of cells could be different uh, voltage than this one and so then you would have to devise a mechanism that would balance the two groups but on my samba for example there's only 30 groups of cells well 30 groups of cells on the lithium cobalt oxide cells 35 on the lithium iron phosphate but that's that's another discussion for now i'm gonna just leave it at here okay next time i'm gonna talk to you guys about BMS that is the next big question. There's a whole thread of like not so much here on YouTube But uh, one of the blogs that picked up the story or whatever. There's a bunch of people saying like ah, oh, where's the BMS? This is ridiculously uh, Dangerous and stuff and so I'm gonna explain to you guys Why the reason is that this thing does not need a BMS and Why I come to that conclusion and it's gonna be a very exciting video. Okay, let's go to dinner now we're taking the we're taking the Chevy Volt. The Samba it's too cold for the Samba. Yet another reason to use electric cars because well actually no, because electricity is produced with coal. <laughs> Never mind. Can't win. <laughs> minutes there wait just for two of us so we decided uh, we're gonna try something else where Lord. <laughs> this mess she left all that mess in here 